Guys, you really need to be careful out there. There's this terrible new disease going around called Longma. The righteous lances of Wei Jin are heavily afflicted. Too much anime, too much dragon cosplay. But they're the newest regiment of renown for the armies of Cathay. And they'll be joining up with the Celestial Dune Daddies to take down a Kislev army somewhere in the Dark Lands. Once again, we'll be showing off the Oath Brothers of Tor and Kostaltin, but I promise this will be the last time we see the old fart for a while. Just so happened to get him a bunch of good replays back to back to back, so it is what it is. Good thing is, he and the bears are pretty dope from a gameplay perspective, so hard to complain too much. Standard kit for the supreme leader of Ursun's cults, ton of synergy with the brothers of Thor, who can summon lightning and generally stomp their way through just about any large target in Warhammer. Took many years for the Age of Monstrous Cab to arrive, but finally it is upon us, and this new batch of regiments of renown are kind of carrying the torch for them. They are quite beastly for the Ogres, for Nurgle, for Kislev. Stay out of that way and maybe you won't get hurt, but I doubt it. They'll be supported by a unit of heavy war sleds, which up until this point could run over Cathay quite easily, provided their cannons were dealt with first. That will be quite a bit more challenging now because of some of these roster changes. Rest of the build is armored Kossars, regular Kossars, and Streltsy for some AP firepower, while a vanguard wing tries to set up a feint and ambush near the eastern reaches of the map. Snow Leopard and Wing Lancers waiting for an opportunity to strike from the tree line. Now on the Cathay side, there is a very elite army ready to plunge into the thick of it, and they're led by the Dune Dragon Celestial Halberd Guard, almost 50 MA and 62 melee defense, making them quite potent provided they can actually catch their targets. And an alchemist with potions for supporting her allies, melee attack, and plus 90 armor are her two. Plague of Rust is her main spell, and she'll increase potency of spells by 15%. But this is an aerial build first and foremost, commanded by a Shugengen of the Lore of Yin, Storm of Shadows for slowing the opposition, and Ancestral Warriors for pinning them in place with AP Halberds, three Longmo Riders, with the Righteous Lances taking up the center overhead. They have Guardian Aura, Immune Psychology and AP Attacks, which will be extremely useful for Cathay moving into Immortal Empires, because it gives them a unit that can actually catch and kill high-value flyers and enemy cav, like Dragon Princes. Quite expensive, maybe even a little niche, but I expect them to play an important role against some of the Game 2 and Game 3 factions in particular. So Cathay have invested heavily in the air here, and that means they'll be pushing the pace. The general idea being, find the enemy cav or war sleds, slow them down with the Storm of Shadows, debuff their armor with Plague of Rust, trap them with the Halberd Summon, then let the Longma finish them off. It's a great way to kill War Sleds, it's a great way to kill Bear Cav, and Kislev doesn't know it yet, but this Vanguard play is already in a lot of danger. The first thing people do with Flyers is scout, and immediately, the second this battle began, they should have been running. They should have seen those three Longma and started moving to link back up with the main army right away. Because the more time you give these Flyers to spot your ambush, less time they'll have to escape, and as we just said, Cathay has a ton of tools like you're seeing right now for making escape a precarious proposition at best. Storm of Shadows, 52% slow, normally it's 45, but getting a plus 15 Mastery of Elemental Winds from the Alchemist. Slowing down the Wing Lancers, that will give them enough time for the Longman to close in, charge in from behind, pin them, and then Ancestral Warriors will try and strike that killing blow. And this is what you have to worry about with the Yin casters on Longma. This is what they provide over the Dragon Siblings and why they're considered meta. They're faster, they're cheaper, and they provide much of the same utility or better with their spell kit. War Sleds are here though, starting to plunk away at the Flyers. So it's not an utter disaster for Kislev, but generally speaking, not how you want to start a game. Wing Lancers will use their Buy Our Blood passive to escape away from the Ancestral Summons. Great idea but perhaps a bit wasteful in the execution of that spell. They had the Hussars dead to rights anyway, not sure they needed to use a Halberd Summon there. We'll be looking at a very interesting and aggressive opening stage because Cathay is not done. They've caught the Snow Leopard, and they're just seeing red, bro. They're going in, they're going deep, and they have a clear-cut mobility advantage, which should help them pick off quite a few targets before the main armies clash. They have to be so careful of those Oath Brothers of Tor, though. If they land in the wrong spot, they're dead. And the Heavy War Sleds aren't going to do a lot in melee here, but they have so much mass, they can pin down these Righteous Lances of Wei Jin, prevent them from moving, and then that plus 40 melee attack and all the support from Kostalton can really start going to work. Summon should only be there for another 20 seconds or so. It won't be around for too much longer. Wing Lancer is caught again by the Longma, who are just 
hyper aggressive at the start of the match and this is where you'll see the mass of those heavy war sleds come into play pinning down these longbow riders gonna make it very difficult for them to escape and then the oath brothers of tor coming in from behind can get those massive armor piercing bonus first large halberd slicing into their flesh this should be a better ancestral warrior summon always a bit risky to use against enemy cav away from the main force because if that cavalry manages to extricate itself the summon's kind of wasted and it's expensive to use but these units are mostly committed now and this is the type of fight where they can change the course of a battle unfortunately looks like a bit of a misclick on plague of rust overcast that hit Castalton and not the Warbear Riders, which are a much more important unit for these Longmud to kill. Plague of Rust is the kind of spell that will allow the regular Longmud to trade into a fight like this one, and without it, that 100 armor of the Oath Brothers can only really be pierced effectively by the Righteous Lances. So even though Cathay is winning this fight, they're investing a lot into it and maybe not getting all the picks they want. The Call of Tor raining down from above, not an amazing way of clear spell for dealing with monstrous cavalry or flyers, but it will still deal some damage. And they have managed to catch out these Kossars as well. So it's another 450 gold or 500 gold down the drain for Kislev. But Cathay's given up a lot to deal the damage they have thus far. They've killed off a Snow Leopard. They've killed off the majority of the Winged Lancers, if not all of them. They've done almost all the damage on those Oath Brothers of Tor, but by our blood might be able to keep them on the map. But in return, they've lost the majority of HP on all their Llama Riders. And I believe, actually no, all three are still alive, but only a handful of models remaining on each. And of course, no way to heal them back either. These Ancestral Warriors about to crumble out too. Castalton trying to push his way out of their mass and finally able to do so atop his War Bear. And this is one of the great things about Monstrous Cavalry is that they synergize incredibly with healing because they have a lot less models. So even though they have slivers of HP remaining, a Solyax Lullaby will do a lot to get them back into fighting effectiveness, even if they're not going to be as powerful as they were at the start of the match when they had 16 models. Kossars are dead, going to get shot to pieces by these Jade Warriors and the Yin Caster. But the Cavalry, after a heal or two from Castalton, if they're used sparingly for the moment, they might be able to crawl their way back in and make an impact. I'm not sure about the Winged Lancers. They're looking real low, but the Warbear Riders for sure, if the heals keep getting sent their way. And I really don't think if they would have taken that fight if they had known they were going to misclick on the Warbear Riders. This is a great idea. It was a really aggressive, bold strategy, but the Plague of Rust misclick was a pretty big deal. I mean, minus 60 armor for like a minute would have been hugely impactful in that fight for the Oath Brothers of Tor, and would have almost assuredly seen their entire unit be killed off in that engagement. Now the Celestial Dragon Guard, the Dune Dragons moving up the center, and they're in the fire arc of Armored Kossars and a whole bunch of Streltsy, which not ideal for them. They do have Missile Black Chance, they do have a lot of armor, but AP volleys hitting them from the flank while they engage in the center. It's going to hurt, and I'm not sure they're going to be able to turn away either, because then you're just turning your back and not getting any missile block chance whatsoever. Storm of Shadows and Plague of Rust upgraded on the heavy war sleds. Cathay has had enough of them. They've gotten enough point blank volleys into these Longmas that they probably racked up a lot of great damage value to this point. Longmas committing to that fight alongside the Yin Caster, so the Kislev Cavalry moving out to that side to support their heavy war sleds. Jade Warriors with Halberds do not have a missile block chance, and they are going to get shot to pieces on the way in. And for the third time this battle, heavy cavalry fight out on the flanks, dies Song of Winter Sunlight, Tor's Battle Hymn, and Ursun's Roar supporting these Oath Brothers of Tor as they attempt to get a full surround off on the Yin Caster and finish off these Longmore Riders for good. And this is the problem with trying to take a fight against monstrous cavalry with AP and bonus versus large. Even the Righteous Lances of Wei Jin don't really want to take an engagement with them head on. They really rely heavily on all those support abilities. And so when that Plague of Rust was miscasted, as we said, those Bear Cav would have been dead. Instead, now they have a free target 
in the back, and they're going after Jade Warriors. Now, there's a brilliant play on the Cathay side here, too. I'm pretty sure it was intentional. Storm of Shadows will slow down the Bear Cav on the way, and that will blunt the impact of their charge a little bit. But look at the formation of these crossbows. They're in a long column, which would normally make them very susceptible to AoE wave clear spells. But in this case, the only wave clear spell they have to worry about is from the Oath Brothers of Tor, and they can't get into the middle of the enemy formation with a charge like that. They can't point target the spell. It only comes down where the bears are themselves. So by lining up in a formation like that one, the crossbows were able to have the back of their units continue firing for one, and they were able to severely mitigate the damage from Call of Tor because it only landed at the edge rather than in their center. Really smart play, and with the remnants of the Longma returning to the field, the Oath Brothers will take a long nap and join Fido in the farm upstate. They did their job though. They made the Longma Riders pay dearly for every inch of ground, and they kept Kislev in a position to win. So even though they're gone now, they did a lot for the armies of the Bear. And now it's the Heavy War Sled's time to pick up the slack. We just saw them get a massive charge into the Jade Warriors. They went through the Celestial Dragon Guard, the Dune Dragons now into the right flank, just bowling over everything they touch. Plague of Rust continuing to harry and harass and focus fire from the Jade Warrior crossbows. Beginning to head their way, Righteous Lances of Wei Jin only have a few models remaining, but they just landed and made it into base contact with the Bear Riders and should be able to finish them off for good, or at least cause them to rout. Now this unit caster has to be very careful the Streltsy are attempting to get away from the Jade Warriors. Storm of Shadows, 45% slow. But here comes Kostaltan with Arsun's Roar. And he will beat the brakes off the Shugang and Lord in melee. No problem at all. He could have like a sliver of HP remaining. And he would still dumpster her in CQB. So she has to be very careful. Jade Warriors just routed. Streltsy doubling with their AP in melee. Able to defend themselves. And now possibly prevent her from escaping. I do not believe there will be an escape for these heavy war sleds. The Righteous Lances of Wei Jin with their armor piercing and the Alchemist in support, able to finish off that unit. And that means that a lot of the most important troops for Kislev are gone. But then again, that's also true for Cathay, who are looking pretty battered. Dune Dragons in the background there with like the tiniest sliver of HP remaining. And the Yin Caster getting her ass beat like a conga drum. Gotta be careful when you decide to charge Streltsy, because they can punish you pretty heavily with their axes, their bardiche on the stock of their weapons. Finally, she's able to escape, slowing down Kostaltan, but he's in charge range, so might be able to land one or two more attacks and maybe prevent her from escaping at all. She might route here. I don't think he'll be able to kill her off. No, she's able to take off again, but that was a lot of damage that went her way. Now the Alchemist and the Righteous Lances committed to a fight with armor-piercing range troops, too. It's a bad time to overcast. Might not want to, considering how much HP she has remaining, and Kostaltan doesn't even care. He's just going right in, and he is gonna take her down in only a couple swipes. Now, she's done her job. I can't imagine that Cathay has any more casting left anyway. A lot, done a lot of overcasts of Plague of Rust, a lot of Storm of Shadows, and, of course, those two Ancestral Warriors summoned, so... That was probably the end of their Winds of Magic anyway, but just in terms of the balance of power, having that Alchemist in the late game could have been pretty useful. I'm not sure if she was able to use all her potions or not. There are two Jade Warrior crossbows still firing into the melee scrum, and that could be game-changing, but the balance of power is not favoring Cathay right now, and it's mostly because of how strong Kostaltan can be. Now, things get a little bit wonky against Halberds, though. He wants to charge into melee, but sometimes those attack animations will carry you a little bit too far forward. And this is actually dangerous for him. So Celestial Dragon Guard and Jade Warrior Halberds, all with their AP chunking into the Warbear, while the crossbows are firing in too. Looking a little bit dicey right now with the focus fire coming in. That's scary. He's got 108 melee attack, but he doesn't want to be there. He wants to tie down these crossbows, and he's going to be able to do so. But again, this weird formation that you very rarely see in multiplayer will make an impact, and they're able to fire from the back of the formation while Kostaltan engages in the front. Super smart. Kostaltan had two-thirds health only a moment ago, down to about one-fifth now, but finishing off the Shugang and Lord, or at least causing her to rout, he's in the threshold now where Regen will start kicking in, and that might keep him in the fight. His leadership is not holding up well, though. Can he finish off these Jade Warrior crossbows? You would think so. 
but they're not horrendously bad in melee. They're quite, they're actually very tanky from compared to most crossbow units, compared to most range units in general. And they have that missile block chance. They're actually very similar to Quarrelers in a lot of aspects, but the Jade Warriors and the Jade Warrior crossbow is very similar to Dwarf Infantry. 1530 HP on Kastalton. He was about to rout, but by our blood kicked in and it was a mass route army losses penalty for Cathay. Kislev managed to pull this one out by the skin of their teeth. Probably had a collective 5,000, maybe 6,000 HP across all their units remaining on the field. So not a whole lot left for the armies of the bear, but they did manage to drag their beaten and bloodied corpses across the finish line. War sleds with 2,000 damage value, Oath Brothers of Tor with 2,000 damage value, Kasaltan with about 1,900 damage value. So those three were the MVPs. They had a rough go of it fighting all those Longmo Riders, but ultimately they traded upwards in those fights considering how much Cathay invested in them. And it would have been very interesting to see how this battle would have gone if that misclick had not occurred and if that Plague of Rust had hit the Warbear Riders instead of Kastalton, because that was just, it ended up being a big waste and they lost quite a few Longmo Riders in that drag it out fight. They probably would not have otherwise fighting 40 armor Warbear Riders instead of 100 armor Warbear Riders. The Longmo did well. I mean, that was a super aggressive, super cool play. And I love those kind of battles where there's a protracted skirmish fight or phase in the early game that doesn't necessarily just turn into football between the two armies. A lot of stages to that battle, very entertaining replay and some cool strats from both players. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the next one. Any pride, signing out for now.